the first thing I'm going to do is start a brand new project and configure it to the proper settings. And I'm going to do that from the Steinberg hub. If for some reason you can't see the hub, make sure the Cubase is loaded, go under the file menu and select new project or type the shortcut, which is control or command N that will take you to the Steinberg hub. Then I'm going to go over to the more category and I'm going to choose an empty project. I'm going to check for my default location, which right now is on my external hard drive in my Cubase projects folder. And I'll click on open. The name of this project is going to be called Cottonwood. So I will give it that name. Then I will click the create button. And then as soon as I see the project window right here, I'm going to type control or command S or go under the file menu and choose save or save as. So when I get to the save dialog box, you'll notice that it's put me into my project folder and I'm just going to give this project the same name as the folder itself, Cottonwood. And then I'm going to give it a revision number, which is just my way of doing it. You can do it the same way or not, whatever way works for you. R01. And then I'll click save. The next thing I want to do is make sure that Cubase is recognizing my audio interface. So I'm going to go under the studio menu and choose studio setup. And then at the top of the left hand column, you'll find audio system. I'm going to make sure that the ASIO driver that I've chosen is the one that I want to use. And then underneath audio system, I'm going to find the name of the audio interface. And I'm going to make sure that I have low input and output latencies. If I don't see these settings around five milliseconds or even lower, depending on how fast the host computer is, I can click on control panel and I can change the buffer size right now. I'm at 128 samples and that will be perfect for what this project is going to need. Then I'm going to go back to the audio system settings and I'm going to make sure that the advanced tab is open right here. So I'll click that little Chevron to open that. I'm going to change the processing precision to 64 bit float. This doesn't have anything to do with the bit depth of the project itself. We'll change that in a moment. This has more to do with how the mixing of the project is done. Higher settings here can generally make your mix sound better. I'm going to make sure that multiprocessing is active because I have multi cores and multiple CPUs in my host computer. I'm going to make sure that activate ASIO guard is turned on right now. The level is going to be set to normal. You could try low settings if your computer is not quite as modern or if you have a bleeding edge high performance computer, you could set that to high. And then once I have those set, I'll click on OK. Then next, I'll want to set the sample rate and bit depth of the project itself. And you can find that under project and project setup. The keyboard shortcut for that is shift S. And then in the lower left hand corner, you'll find the settings for sample rate. I'm going to want 44.1 kilohertz. The bit depth that I prefer to use is 32 bit float. I like to record in 32 bit floating point, but as long as you choose something above 16 bit, you're going to be OK. The floating point processing adds a lot of advantages. I think 64 bit at this point is a little bit overkill. So I'm going to set that to 32 bit float and the record file type is going to be as a wave file. And in this window, you can also check where your project folder is and you can click the show in finder button and you'll see that that is at the cottonwood folder that I made. And inside of that folder is the project itself. Then there are two other settings I'm going to make in the preference setting. For Mac users, you can find preferences under the Cubase pull down menu and choosing preferences. For Windows, you'll go under the edit pull down menu and choose preferences at the bottom of the list. Once you're in preferences, go to the general setting on the left hand side and then find the autosave setting. I'm going to enable autosave with an interval of every five minutes. That way, if I forget to press save or my computer crashes or the power goes out, then I'll only need to swim upstream for five minutes of the last amount of work that I've done on the project. So it's nice to have Cubase save that for you from time to time. In this case, every five minutes. And the last thing that I'm going to do, this is totally optional. 
original, but under the MIDI filter setting, I'm going to turn on the filter for recording after touch. I tend to press the key pretty hard, and I rarely record with any sounds that use that after touch. So I'm just going to filter that out so that the processing of all that after touch doesn't clog up my MIDI lines. Then I'll hit the apply button and close the preferences window. And in the next tutorial, I'll set the tempo and metronome.